Hello my friends and welcome back to episode 35 of the Hardcore Iron Man Progress. Let's begin this week by getting back into some more Slayer. Goal is to reach 90 by the end of this episode. So let's grab another assignment from Kona. And uh, it looks to be that we already had a Hellhounds task, so let's go finish that off. Hopefully we can get a few strength levels as well. Feels like ages since we've had a freaking hard clue to open, but we're here in hallowed ground. This is Settled's territory. Let's see if the man himself will give us a blessing. Come on, baby. What is contained in this beautiful casket? And it's going to be sharks and a teleport. Yay. Okay, moving on from that lame hard clue. Let's see what we can end up with. 140 blood vells. That is actually, again, my favorite location to do them. So thank you very much, Conan. Beautiful. Coming in here with some very good timing, 85 agility will be unlocked, one of the very last requirements for the elite diary in the RD area, very very cool. I might have to boost up for the thieving step I just noticed, but that's absolutely fine. Uh, we have a lot of the spices that are required in the bank. But yeah, one more level two, we can do the Calphite Queen shortcut as well, and we can do the Elven Overpass for the Western Elite. So, a lot of nice unlocks, and another step down. 85 Jilly, very cool. Very nice, as you can see here in the chat box, I've gotten a new assignment of Lizard Men. It is in the Lizard Man settlement. I think that's where Captain Cleave is, so I should be able to put the new Slayer Helmet and Archer Ring Eye to good use after all. It's going to be nice, dude, and Anguish as well. Bonuses should be pretty sexy. Another nice level, 91 range, should be coming in at the Lizardmen Shamans. A very, very nice. Another way closer to 99 on the range. We've not recorded one of these Hespori kill counts in quite a while. Let's clear it and see what we get this time round. I'm still waiting on that bucket, dude. 15 kill count. Come on. Nope, not this time round. I decided to swing by the farming guild and grab a Thieving Augment. There is level 77, very, very nice. As I mentioned before, I'll need a boost, the plus three to do a pickpocket for the RD Elites. Uh, there should be like 400 each for the, uh, whoa, that's actually a pretty nice haul. 600 barley, 400 hammerstone, and we got a couple of snapdragons in there, and five rainars, so not too bad. We don't get one of these too often. This is an elite clue I got from a birdhouse run. So let's open up the casket. There's been a few good rewards so far. Let's see what we get this time around. Ooh, not so great, not so great. Oh, what are those? Elf camp teleports. I will take it. Just got this hard clue casket from a uh, Hellhound's task with Kona. Could my luck finally be turning around? Who knows? Let's open it up and see what the reward is. Hey, nice. Bandos braces. I think those are new. And what is that page? Is that Armadillo? I think I might already have page three. But let's check it out. It might be new. By the way, I cannot for the life of me get a freaking dragon hide piece that isn't the gloves or the coif. It's so impossible for me right now to get a pair of Dragonhide boots. I've been just rocking the snakeskin. I'm genuinely convinced that I will not be able to get anything before Ranger boots. But yeah, let's check it out, see if these uh, pages are new. Nope, that was a duplicate. Very, very nice, as always. Um, and the third pair of freaking braces. And we got this coif, this coif, and the Saradomin one in here as well. Disgusting. Oh, nice. We actually got it. The bottomless compost bucket and Atas seeds. That is amazing. This thing is going to save me so much time going back to the volcanic ash mines. This thing, I think, just doubles the amount of charges you usually would get from your regular ultra compost, if that makes sense. So this is a good, good drop to get, man. I'm so happy. My dude has Pori coming in with the clutch drops. We've been training Slayer for quite a while now, and we're just 100 XP or less away from my big old milestone. 2k total has been achieved. What a nice freaking level to get, man. I've never had an account this high level. 94 strength. We are approaching the maximum amount of hits we can do passively. And uh, the account is going really good, man. The combat level is looking high. 2000 total. We can now access those couple of worlds. Um, so that might be a good help with bossing and any stuff that I might have to do in the wilderness as well. But yeah, pretty nice milestone. 2000 total. By the way, I've not been recording much Slayer content so far. I have just completed another task. We are well on our way to like 2.5k points or something by now. We're fast approaching 400 tasks, but the reason why I'm recording is I'm going to gather up these brimstone keys. I'm wondering how, how much I can uh, get until 90 Slayer. Okay, we're at the infamous noted potions freaking spot where I got the hard casket last time. Can we get a piece of dragon hide that isn't boots or coif? Come on, baby. Ah, oh, rip skis. 
Oh well, at least it's nice Alks, I guess. Time to grab another assignment. Let's see what we end up getting. We need Blood Builds, absolutely beautiful, extra XP at the Slayer Tower as well. A couple of Brimstone Keys, can't complain. So there's been a recent update with the Brimhaven Dungeon, whereby you can just pay 1 mil permanently for the access and you won't have to bring coins every time you come down here. I know I don't really often come down here for anything, but it's still something nice to unlock. So here, here's 1 million coins, Mr. Sanabok. Use it to get some clothes. Thank you very much, dude. Yet another level from Cosmics and his Gothics. Here's 73. Very, very close indeed to unlocking the giant pouch. Might be very nice to get. I'm going to knock out a couple more levels indeed in this episode in uh, ZMI. So that might take a bit longer, but we'll have 75 by the episode's end. Feels good. As you guys may have noticed, I am a huge fan of daily battle staffs. I've almost every day done it to get the most XP and get the most amount of monetary gains out of it. But I've been thinking, it is eating up way too much of my time in terms of making the cosmic runes, doing the fire orb enchanting and making the staffs. I'm at a point in my account where I can make a lot of money by doing Slayer, so I'm deciding not to go ahead with making any more battle staffs after reaching this level. Now I've been thinking long and hard about this and in terms of the money I've made already, I don't need it moving forward. I do indeed have enough banked to make my last piece of the torture jewellery as well. Um, I've got about 26,000 buckets of sand in the bank so from this point forward I will sadly no longer be doing the daily battle staffs. It is something I might do in the future but for now I am just going to get this level and that will mark the very end of my battle staffs grind on the account. There's 91 crafting, two more levels until I can boost to make the Amulet of Torture. Alright, I risk wilderness for this casket. I had to dig in a level 11 of wilderness out by Edgeville. So here we go. Was it worth it? Was it worth the status risk? Ooh, Zamrak page. Uh, no, that's completely useless. I've already completed the book. Let's go. We just got the Drake's Claw. That is such a nice drop. I can now combine it with my Brimstone Boots and uh, get a bit more defense when I'm down here doing Slayer assignments. So I'm really happy to get that. And no duplicates. One out of 512. I am very lucky. I think I've only killed about maybe 200 of these so far. Yeah, it's a pretty bad task, but... I guess I'll finish up here and then I will never do them again. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, combine the Drake's Claw with the Boots of Stone to create the Brimstone Boots. These are going to be nice in terms of any Slayer tasks that go on ahead from here in the Karoom Dungeon. These give just a bit more bonuses in terms of uh, magic defense and some other stuff. And looks pretty cool with the barrel set as well and the technical whip, so pretty nice pair of boots. Let's see if you can actually trade them. No, you can't. And uh, maybe there's some other hidden effects, I'll need to look into it. But for now, we are done with Drake's, so after these 50, I think they're going on the block list. Yeah! One kind of neat feature of the Boots of Brimstone that I failed to pick up on the first time around was that they're actually a range upgrade. So if you guys take a look at the Snakeskin Boots range bonus, it's a plus 3 and the magic attack is minus 10. Uh, the Brimstone Boots don't have a negative magic attack bonus and they have a more range and more defense as well. So they're all round a really good upgrade for our range setup which is pretty cool, and uh, they're going to function as our best in slot, I guess, until Ranger Boots or God Dragonhide Boots, so this is more of an upgrade than I could have thought. Oh, Kona, you juicy, juicy lady giving me those lizard men. Hell yes, I can use the Slayer Helm, the Anguish. It's all going to be beautiful, dude. Let's go do it. There can be no hope in this hell. Oh my Christ, I just got freaking defense caped out of lizard men shamans. I've just completely disconnected from the game. This is the second time this has happened today. That could have actually been the end of my fucking account right there. Alright, I, I think I'm gonna skip this task. There's just too much. This is the next day now after that Lizard Man Shaman ordeal. Oh, I've come back and I've completed a hard casket. The same drop that was uh, given from Shamans. So hopefully this has some good loot to make up for my almost death. Let's check it out. Hey, yes! Zamorak Dehyde, that's actually a sick drop to get, man. I'm pretty sure this is essential for um, God Wars Dungeon. I'm not even sure which one, but this is a nice drop to get. Let's go! Zamorak Dehyde obtained. I've always been complaining the last couple of caskets. I've not been able to get any god pieces, so this is a sick one to get, dude. Zamorak Dehyde has been obtained. Let's go! We are back in Swampletics land. After that turnaround with the hard clue, we got another medium from Brian Rats. Let's open her up, see what we get. Smithral Kite Shield T, above average, not bad. Hey, look at that value, baby. Nice. Got another hard clue completed. I don't know what's going on, but my luck seems to be turning around. My prediction is Rune Bucket Helm. Let's open her up, see what we get. 
Ooh, Zamorak Braces. I'm like 70% sure that might be a duplicate, but that's two back-to-back -back Zamorak pieces. What the hell? I'm actually going to go check if that's new. Okay, let's check that out. Oh no, those are actually unique. So we're on three pieces of the Zamorak Dehydes. We're missing the boots and the legs. So it might well be complete sometime. Not bad. 90 Slayer coming in for the fellas, very very nice level, one level to go until we reach Cerberus, that is a very nice milestone. I've got about 30 Brimstone keys to turn in, I'm really excited to see the amount of loot we can get, but yeah that's another level to 90 or above, it is looking very neat indeed. 2004 total level and 90 Slayer, three levels to go until Zora and uh, yeah, booming. Oh, I almost forgot, I can actually now kill Dark Beast. That's actually going to be quite a nice task to do from here on out. Is they're short and they're decent XP as well, and they might have more chances to get uniques. So yeah, let's go. Oh, he's so beautiful to see on the ground, dude. It's It's been a so long since I've had a whip drop. I think I've had like five or six assignments now. Can't exactly complain about being dry, seeing as we've still got three of these unused left in the bank. But yeah. New Abyssal Whip to add to the collection, absolutely beautiful. I think I'm on like 1.3k of these killed or something. I'm going to check that in just a moment. So let's go check the kill count. I'm actually quite curious to see what this is. Abyssal Demons, 1.3k. And I think that was my sixth whip, if I'm not mistaken. Okay, it might be fifth. Depending on how many I've got in the bank. Yeah, I think this is my fifth whip. That is insane in terms of drop rates. So this is a superior, a 90 slayer and an abyssal whip within 10 kills. That is just crazy. All right, I'm about ready to collect all these brimstone keys. 31 of them. That is actually some insane amounts. I wonder how much profit I'm going to make from all this. Maybe even a couple of uniques. Who knows? Let's head on over to the Konar and uh, check it out. All right, here we are. Let's check it out. 31 keys versus one chest. Let's go. Okay, there's 31 brimstone keys unlocked, 143 uncut diamonds, and some other alchemals. Dude, I think this is a little bit underwhelming if I'm honest, I would have expected a bit more. There's 300k and some more stuff. Let's chuck it all in a price check. It is still better than nothing to get 3.3 mil for free if you think about it, but um, I did expect a bit more. I don't know, maybe I'm being unreasonable, but at least there's 8 torstal seeds. Uh, some Redwoods and some Renars, so can't really complain too much. I think I'm going to be switching back to Steve right now, and uh, yeah, that's about it. Now that we're done with Slayer, I think I'm going to move on, uh, maybe grind out some Blast Furnace yet again. I'm planning to get on uh, 86 smithing this episode, so yeah, I'm going to need to do a lot of gold buying and a lot of gold smelting, so let's get to it. Blast Furnace time, baby. Just completed an elite clue from a birdhouse run. It's been a while since we've been able to open one of these bad boys. I'm hoping for some unique loot. I think this one might be getting close to 10 of these completed, so could be a nice milestone. Anyway, let's open it up and see what we get. Wow. Oh, okay. That's a Lover Kench. I thought that was just another Dragonstone piece there for a second. I was like, freaking glory... Uh, combat bracelet and uh, ring of wealth starter pack out here other than that Lovakenj is a unique I guess but other than that it's a pretty shit clue spent a little while here at the blast furnace and uh, acquired myself 17.5k gold ores these are what's required to get to 86 smithing didn't take too long and um, I think that set me back about five to six mil on the cash stack so since I'm not doing battle stuff so I might be feeling the impact of this economically a bit more but that's fine uh, important thing is after I get this completed I'll be able to get the boost for the elite diary so I'm very excited I'm hyped to get this done let's go we are two levels deep into the grind here achieving the iconic level of 85 smithing we can now finally get our hands on runite how sexy does that look oh we can make some sigils on blessed spirit shields that probably will never happen but it's still nice to get 85 one more level to go until I can boost for those beautiful rune limbs. Let's keep going. Very glad to be dumping my last inventory of the gold ores over in the blast furnace. And here comes 86 smithing. Very, very nice. 
five mil spent another time here we are not going to be coming back here for a very long time and more importantly we can finally boost and get my elite diary so let's go get it done no more delays let's get it Things have been going pretty smooth so far. We're on the last task. A which better one to finish off the RD Elite Diary than finishing off the Rune Crossbow from Scratch step. So let's go ahead and aim for that plus five boost. I've got about nine spicy stews to make um, from nine spices. I have a pretty horrible feeling that I might have to trek back to Edgeville, but uh, let's give it a try, see how far we get. Yes, we got the boost, let's go, let's create the limbs, baby. Oh, I've been waiting for this moment for so long. Ah, oh, it's so beautiful, dude. Let's go finish up the other stages. Let's make the stock. Absolutely beautiful. Okay, this took far too long, but we've now got the sinew to make the crossbow string, so hopefully I don't mess anything up and the task is still in order. Yes, we are still progressing with the task now. Let's do the elusive moment. Use the runite limbs we crafted ourselves on the U stock. Beautiful. And finally adding the crossbow string. We have made our crossbow, my friends. And with that, we have completed each task in the entire RD diary. A momentous moment for the account, the first ever Elite Diary. Let's go claim our reward. Let's go. This is exciting, dude. All right, we're here. Let's claim that beautiful cloak, our first ever Elite Diary. How beautiful does this thing look? This thing has a nice benefit. Unlimited teleports to the RD farm. Absolutely amazing for farm runs. Never gonna have to worry about those running out ever. So that's one benefit. Another one as well being the maximum noted amount of drops over at the Tower of Life. So all my Snapdragons plus red spider eggs are sorted for life. And this big old XP lamp which gives me 50k in the skill of my choice. Of course going on Herblore as always. Oh that feels so satisfying dude. The dopamine rush as Swampletics likes to say. Um, apart from that I don't think there's any, any other major benefits. Um, the cloak itself is pretty neat. I think the stats on this are one of the best for bursting. So let's take a look at what those are. So that's going to be plus 6 mage and plus 6 prayer which is actually significant as well. Um, absolutely beautiful though. The first ever elite diary completed on the entire account. RD is done. And our 2 out of 3 goals for episode 40 have been completed. The RD elites and 99 farming is out of the way. Our farming is going to be so, so nice right now. We only need more Tanya elites to get even better. But for now, we've completed the diary. We will move on and uh, complete the next stage of our mage training arena pla um, plan. So let's go and unlock the next level of the wand. I'm so pleased, dude. Look at it. It's so freaking nice. You know, out of all the rooms down here in the mage training arena, the telekinetic one always makes a part of my soul die a little bit. And the part of me is gone. But yeah, there's 150 points. We've now got everything we need to unlock the next tier of wand. So let's not delay. Let's go grab it. Okay, let's trade the points in for the next tier of the wand, which is the teacher wand. Very nice. We've obtained three out of four upgrades for the wand. And let's see how this one looks. This one looks plainest of all. I think the, the further you go in this, the worse the wand looks. Look at it, man. Looks like some fake rip-off Harry Potter wand. But yeah, three out of four, and um, with the next one, we will most likely not be coming back to the mage training arena. Maybe for the book, but uh, for now, we are done. So for now, there's two more rune crafting levels to achieve. I did want to hit 75 before the episode's end to unlock the giant pouch, um, and there's five more quests to do. So I think, first of all, I'm going to do some questing, and then finish off with the rune crafting. 
I think that's gonna be the most painful part. So let's get it. Let's go ahead and uh, finish up Rag and Bone Man part two. The collection has been completed. If you guys have ever done this quest, you guys probably know uh, it takes an absolute eternity. So let's grab the bone sack and let's grab our XP reward. So this is our first quest done this episode and we'll aim to get about four more done. So I'll see what's available and uh, we're pretty close to a prayer level. I might go and knock out my daily Ectophontus for the, for the rest of the XP. And here we are to finish off 79 prayer. This is such a nice daily dude, especially if you've been stockpiling dragon bones from Slayer or something. Right now I don't have too many, but uh, it's such a nice XP, like 26 a day, even that, that's so nice in the long run. Yeah, getting up there, nearly 80 prayer. Back to it now with some more quests out of the way, starting off with A Tale of Two Cats and then moving on to a couple of other long ones. So I've already got the hops growing for the forgettable tale of the drunken dwarf and then we're going to finish off with some shorter ones. But yeah, there's the Tale of Two Cats completed. We get two more quest points and a mysterious gift. Time to finish up the Drunken Dwarf quest. This one took an absolute eternity as well, but it's super worth it. Now those two quests that I have to wait for stuff to happen, they're completely over with, and I don't have to worry about them, and some more quest points should be coming in. Anyways, quest completed, 5k farming XP, 5k cooking XP, and two mature dwarven stouts, which I think boosts smithing and mining by two or something. But I think I'm just gonna get rid of them, there's no point in me keeping them in the bank. But yeah, two more quest points. We're actually getting very close to finishing everything we got and uh, up to 256 now. Um, I really hope they expand on the quest line here. I remember they did so in RS3 and you can actually pick up some really cool rewards. So potential here for a Grandmaster quest to be added into the game potentially after Song of the Elves. So pretty cool. Two more quests to go and then we can get on with runecrafting. Finishing up one of the more annoying quests of the free to play, the Missilin mystery quest has been completed. I get some gems, some crafting XP and another quest point. One more quest left to go, pretty easy one as well. I'll be getting to that in a sec. Before doing the next quest, as you can see, I have completed a medium clue and uh, today they've actually increased the amount of stuff you can get from these and by the looks of things, they've also made them stackable, which to be honest, I wasn't really a big fan of, but Anyways, let's see what we get here. Maybe we get a new item. Nope, just junk. About to hand in the last quest in the series. The tribal totem has been completed. Okay, I get a freaking five swordfish as well. This is the most random quest reward. But yeah, we get some more thieving XP and a quest point. And this for now will be the last quest we take care of for this episode. Total 258 quest points. And we are about ready to get started on the rune crafting grind as well. Two levels in this episode. Then we can unlock the giant pouch, which would be pretty cool for the uh, battle stars. So let's get to it. Time to go ZMI. So I just did my first ever run where I planted snake grass in all six of the allotment patches, and I just received 676 freaking pieces of snake grass. That's more than 50,000 experience for all of that collected, because they're 84 each. Oh man, ultra compost, the farming cape, and atas seed is a lethal mixture. I'll never have to collect snake grass again. Incoming with the first of two levels of the grind here at ZMI, we're going to be achieving 74 runecrafting, which in a way is kind of sad because now that means runecrafting is no longer our lowest skill. Now mining is only 2k away, but still kind of sad to see the day when runecrafting isn't my lowest one. But yeah, one level left to go, 113k. I think this is going to take several hours, but it's going to be worth it when I unlock the giant pouch. So let's keep going. I am finally coming to the end of this mini grind dude, it's been quite long here at ZMI, finally finishing off 75 runecrafting, we unlocked the giant pouch, and that's going to be amazing. Let's go and check out how much impling jars we were able to bank this time around, we should be over 1k now overall in the bank, so that should be pretty exciting for when I start off the medium clue grind. Um, apart from that, a fair number of runes as well, I think I used more than 10,000 pure essence this time around, yeah. I remember having like 40 plus K, so let's check out the Impling Jars. Ooh, nice, just under a thousand. It's not going to be too bad when I go and hunt some Eclectics, but more importantly, let's go grind out the Giant Pouch from the Abyss and test out one inventory of Cosmics. Hey, that was like the fifth kill, let's go. Giant Pouch obtained. Let's go test it out. So usually when I make my Cosmic Runes, I get about 80 per inventory um, with all the pouches. Let's go and check out this Giant Pouch. I am excited to see how many we get. This should be like three attempts at, uh, at the altar here. So, so far 90, should be like 112 maybe or something like that. Oh man, that is so beautiful. That's like 26 more than I usually get. So this should speed up battle stars a whole lot when I do them now. And uh, yeah, I'm doing battle stuffs again. I'm going back on what I said in the previous clip. 
So nice. 75 rune crafting obtained. I think it's time to finish off the video. Let's go. With 75 rune crafting obtained, it is time to finish off episode 35 of the Hardcore Progress. A lot of gains made in this one, especially the first Elite Diary on the account. Very excited to have gotten the RD Cloak 4 moving forward. That's going to be freaking awesome for farm runs. So that's two out of three of our goals that we set out in episode 30. Done now. We just need to get the Elite Diary for Mauritania done, and then we'll have all of our goals knocked out for that entire quest series and progression. Apart from that, speaking of quests, I did complete five more this episode, including Rag and Bone Man Part 2, which took quite a while, uh, Tale of Two Cats, Forgettable Tale of a Drunken Dwarf, and a couple of free-to-play quests as well. Um, and I did get my 90 Slayer with Konar, quite a few bit of drops in terms of money as well from that side, and a new boots upgrade for range, which is quite exciting. Uh, speaking of range as well, I did manage to get my first ever piece of god hide for the top or the bombs, the Zamorak D hide, which is going to be really, really nice for God Wars dungeon whenever I uh, get around to completing Sarah. We are now on 3 out of 4 for the Mage Training Arena 1s as well, so we're getting pretty close to getting that uh, burst set up nice as well. And of course, finishing off some rune crafting with 75 obtained. No longer the noob I was before, and now I need to get my mining up so that Tears of Gothics can go back into this again. But probably won't be a priority for a while. Um, all in all, pretty good episode, I would say. And uh, I did also reach 2k total, which is uh, pretty insane. And getting up there in levels uh, and total XP for Hunter and farming as well. Up for next episode is um, I'm planning to go back to Kingdom. I haven't done Herb Law in quite a while. I think I should have 91 banked from all the stuff I haven't collected as of yet. Um, should get 99 hit points as well, doing some more Slayer. We're going to return to Steve now um, and try and aim for perhaps some Demonic Gorillas to get my Tormented Bracelet or something like that in the next one. Um, apart from that as well, finishing off the Mage Training Arena Master Wand. And I'm going to be trying to boost for one more Elite Diary, which is uh, pretty exciting. It will be the Karend one now that I have 75 rune crafting, And I'll need, I think, one more woodcutting level before I can chop Redwoods with the Dragon Axe boost. So I might try and do all that uh, in the next episode. So all that to look forward to, my friends. Thank you so much for tuning in. Those of you who still watch the videos, you guys are the real Gs. I'll see you guys soon. Peace.